Then, 1980 came. Early March 1980, Bacchus Matthews Paul had organized something called a midnight demonstration. I think you've heard about it here. We didn't know about it. Bacchus had called for the resignation of President Talbot and, and President Warner. Talbot was, I think, on a patrol, nationwide patrol, and he was in Nimba. I was a senior student at the University of Liberia, so I remember fairly well. And uh, Tobo, while Tobo was there, they are organizing the midnight demonstration. And I think E. Regional Townsend was uh, presiding over the cabinet. And that was really, really, uh, as Moja described it later on, an NBC action. That was just unacceptable. That was when uh, Idi Amin had been in power in, in Uganda and we had known what Idi Amin had done. What it did could not have been accommodated by Idi Amin. It was reported by government that it moved on the mansion with, uh, with petrol bombs, gasoline in bottles and all of that and hand grenades. That was an assault on the executive mansion. So they were arrested and detained. We did not support that. We condemned that action. Moja condemned that action. We, at, at the student leadership of the University of Liberia ourselves, did not support that action. The movie on the mansion in the night was a military action. It was not a political action. And so, when the president came back, it was reported that this had happened. And Bacchus and others were detained, and a lot of power supporters throughout the country were detained, even from Nimba, Chief Wole Tupa, uh, the late Samir Duki, and, and, and a lot of them were detained. I have been elected president of the Nimba Students Association at the University of Liberia. And then, and, and, and uh, George K. was elected president also on a post. On April, well, by April 10th, Mr. Swen said today by April 8th, there was wide rumor in Liberia that there were more than 50 persons in jail, that all of these people will be executed on the anniversary of April 14th. That the True Party leadership has signed a resolution, and that once Tobo left and went to Zimbabwe for the Lona Line conference, the execution would take place in his park. And that a resolution was in a mansion that members of the, the House of Representatives and Senate and the judiciary, everybody has signed. So when Tobo said, after Bacchus and others were arrested, that there would be justice in this case, and justice would be done mercilessly People connected that mercilessly with the rumor that all of these people will be executed without trial. And the rumor went wild in Monrovia. Everyone believed the rumor. So April 12th came and Tobo was overthrown. From April 12th till today's day, nobody has seen that paper. That is how dangerous rumor has been in Liberian politics. Rumo also contributed to our conflict because there has been no one to prove that indeed there was this decision made by the Tory party to execute all the people that were in detention. But the majority of the people believed it and the soldiers believed it. I believe that it was for the purpose of rescuing some of the people that were in jail that the coup took place. Know the leaders that were in jail. Samuel Doki, DK Wansalie from Nimba County, young political activist, very popular. Oscar Kuya from Sino. George Bole, the only PhD at the time from Grand Jeddah, and the enlightened son that they were proud of. Who were the coup leaders? 
Samuel Do from Grand Jelly. Wesian is Sapo Man, like Oscar Quia from Sino. Kuopa, a Nimba Man, Ligim with DK Wonselier, and Samuel Tuki. Sorry, and Samuel Tuki. These gentlemen had to rescue. I believe it was in Zwerchu, or on one occasion I remember that those said that to say that our only PhD was going to be executed, we had to rescue him. And so, but this rescue mission was based on popular yet unfounded rumor. To, to today, people search the mansion after the coup, they search the Capitol building, they search everywhere, and there is no evidence that that decision was made to execute this gentleman. So it's important if there's a lesson to learn out of the crisis to discourage rumors and to make sure that people speak the truth. Open up the space so that people don't have to hide to say this is the truth. So that every information can be verified. Lack of freedom of expression and therefore allowing people to engage in rumors contributed to the conflict. So I strongly believe that one of the backgrounds of the coup was that terrible rumor that the people in jail would have been executed on April 12. On April 11, one of those executed, James T. Phillips, before his execution, was our installing officer on the Universal Liberia campus. He even promised us $5,000. And George Kier was the student leader. He was installed that night. We were at the student center dancing. I went to bed early. At 11.30, a man called Bracewell came running to the student center, I mean to the Simon Greenleaf Hall. I was in the dormitory and said that all of us were in jail, we've been released, there's a coup. We said that's not true. We got outside and there was shooting in the air, but there was no exchange of fire. So Abito said to George Kier, this cannot be a coup. But this is a government that's being in power, a regime that's being entrenched. So how can they be shooting in the air and there's no exchange of fire? So maybe they are just shooting up warning shots. A young man called readers, you know, you and myself were brave. We sort of went to the university gate, crawled behind the buses that used to take students to Fendel and to hear what was happening. We saw two soldiers passing. And two of them were speaking manner with uh, communication gadgets in the back and they said tomorrow Liberian people will see his body, we'll kill him. So I brought back the news to, I said, Richard said, let's leave. Toba has been killed and there was no resistance. I came back and told the students at the Simon Greenleaf Hall that a coup had taken place. Mind you, that kind of thing had never happened. Our parents, parents didn't tell us that something like that was happening. It was, it was unbelievable. So that's how we knew that the coup had taken place. Next morning, people were jubilating. And I told KBK, he reminded me about this many years later. I said, I'm not happy about the coup. He said, why? I said, we will be the first target of the military. Because we are accustomed to speaking the truth. We will be the first target. This thing we have that even if bullet to our breast, we shall speak the truth, we'll be tested by these people. So that morning, another friend, another student, Emmanuel and Sigrid, and I left and headed towards Moja office to find out whether to put a new about the coup. We arrived there, there was some elderly crew people around him. He was dressed in jeans uh, and uh, navy blue, shared a worker suit with Uncle Booth. And, and we said, do you know about the coup? He said, no. I'm just sitting here to see whether anybody will call me. We then left and went to Bishop Francis. We saw Isaac Bantu at Bishop Francis' place, and we asked him about the coup. He said, can you imagine the Americans call me this morning and ask me whether I know about the coup? They will have CIA and all that. What? I Bishop, what I will know about the coup? So he was in his office. People that were at his house, people were in the street, jubilating, native more born soldiers, soldier killed Tobo, and all of that. And then EFBC were playing Papa's Land the whole day, and fire in Sueto. The day went. But true to what I said, we became the first target. 
Terry Zuo, a member of the PRC, brought information to the students, to, 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 to spokesman editorial staff, when George K. was also president. To the effect that George Bole, that Rasami brothers had given $500 to some members of the PRC through the president, Minister of State for Presidential Affairs, and spokesman published a story of Britain. Henry Zou came and said, you wrote about Tobo government and we overthrew Tobo. It would be unfair not to write about us too. Here is what is happening even on our regime. As Ben Jira, who was editor-in-chief of the spokesman, said to me later on, Ben Jira said that do call him and call uh, he and George Kier and I went to the marshal and he came back, that's what he said, and that was the end of a spokesman actually. He said, Do told them, so you university students think that the PRC cannot execute students. If you guys play with me, I will execute you 12 o'clock in the day. 